this is Beyond a Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. Get a mandate. Get it on. And welcome to the best 15 minutes or so in the universe. It's Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. I'm Adam Carolla. Mark Garrigus wearing a jacket. So had a Zoom. Uh, I've been Zoom court all day. Going to do a Zoom court as soon as we get off of here. It's been a busy, busy 2022. Although I just saw a email that Ventura courts are shutting down for everybody but in custody criminal cases. And uh, I'm not so sure that the other courts won't follow right behind. So it looks like another uh, COVID wave of closures is in our immediate future. Uh, So what's on your mind? What are you working on or what's in the news? Let me tell you one that I really got a kick out of. We could give a shout out to our researcher extraordinaire, Brett. Uh, Gary, do you want to set this up? Because this may, you know, oftentimes I read about cases and I think to myself, I'm just, I, maybe I'm over my head in this, uh, in this world because I never could have thought of the cause of action to contemplate a legal uh, lawsuit. And this, apparently there's a lawyer out there who is much smarter and much more clever than I, who is apparently consulting with a woman who apparently uh, slept with, who was it, Gary Drake? Drake. Okay. Oh. And Mm-hmm. Have you seen this, Adam? Yeah. Well, there's a paternity thing, right? Well, okay. So he has a he has a son, uh, right. and there it was sort of a secret for a while, and then it was sort of exposed, and and he's very public about that. This is not that. This is an Instagram model who Drake hooked up with online. Then they met, smoked some weed at a hotel, and had sex. Apparently, before they had sex, Drake went into the bathroom and came out with a condom on. They had sex for 20 minutes. Then he mm-hmm. went back into the bathroom. He discarded the the uh, condom and came back into the room. Well, this this Instagram influencer went into the bathroom, found the condom, and tried to shove the contents inside of her, mm. not knowing that Drake had put a packet of hot sauce in there to kill the sperm. Oh. To yeah. kill the sperm. To kill the sperm, he allegedly carries around her. No, 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 he allegedly carries around packets of hot sauce at all times for this purpose. Him and Hillary Clinton are the only two people I know who actually travel with Tabasco. But okay, uh, well, first things first. Is that clinically correct that hot sauce will kill sperm? We'll have to ask Drew <laughs> because I'm. We really needed Drew for this, didn't we? I am. I am going to take the side of the plaintiff here, saying he wanted to punish anybody who tried to use his sperm in a out of a coit out of a coitus setting, and that's why he did it. And now she has damages. I, I would, I would have, look, Mark, sorry, I'm playing devil's advocate. I, I, you, I, like I said, I, I never can get to your status in terms of your layman's legal ability to come up with it because apparently she's now uh, contemplating legal action for the damages for shoving the discarded condom up the uh, place where the sun doesn't shine in order to, I suppose, uh, get a payday for the next period of time well if i'm representing her i would say to you mark if you're representing drake look uh i'm not defending what my client did what i'm saying is is you are not allowed to dig a burmese tiger trap inside of your door filled with bamboo shoots because someone may break into your house now, I'm not defending the person that breaks into the house, but I'm saying you're not allowed to do that to them. You're not, you know, if you own a liquor store and somebody breaks in through the skylight, you're not allowed to put barbed wire inside of it that they could hang themselves on. That still comes back to you. And so I feel this was punitive. I feel like he did it. And I, for whatever she did, that was wrong. But he essentially took the law into his own hands. You know, there's a doctrine called unclean hands. Do you think that would come to play here? Really? Yeah. I mean, that's a legitimate, and we could actually call. See, this is the problem I have. You're absolutely right that there have been 
cases over the years, including I think the I, I think the U.S. Supreme Court case. And I until you made this argument, I hadn't thought about it in a while. Where somebody had um, in a vacant building set up a spring gun or spring activated gun. So if you broke into the building, you'd get shot. Um, and that was, and there was, uh, that went, uh, as I remember, all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I've had the case in Pasadena, in fact, where there was a person who had climbed in um, to burglarize a market, as I remember, and then got stuck and was paralyzed and um, um, and ended up suing because they, they were stuck in the um, I just remember they kind of fell through the skylight and there was a question. Yeah, I remember that story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, this case, part of the problem I have is if you've discarded it into your trash, and remember there was a, a, a famous trash case involving the late Steve Bing where um, Pelicano, I think, had gone through, or maybe another PI had gone through the trash of somebody at um, at a case uh, uh, who was involved in a family law case. They had found that the dental floss tested it, and it turned out that the progeny was not, in fact, the person they were suing for um, uh, child support. And I'll change the names to protect the innocent. In that case, the trash cans were on the curb. So it was, you had no expectation of privacy. Here, while still in the hotel room, I think you do have an expectation of privacy. I also don't think that somebody, that it's when you discard a condom, I, I don't think it's foreseeable that somebody's going to shove it up their um, vagina. But then, not the for you, <laughs> not for me, but Drake's, sure. Drake. But my, obviously Drake thinks it's foreseeable, which is why he does it. Is that what you're saying? Why would he put the Tabasco in there if he didn't anticipate this happening? Let's stop sullying their good name. Hot sauce is all we know for sure. We don't know what Hot brand. Hot sauce, right. right. It could have been Tapatio. I mean, you I, don't know. I would and, argue that he did think it was possible. That's why he did it. Otherwise, well, it's just a good waste of hot sauce. Well, I think there's a compelling argument there that I had not thought of, which is one of the reasons I love um, doing a legal podcast with you to get your crystal brain around the fact that it was foreseeable. Drake, uh, Drake knew it was foreseeable because otherwise, why would he have gone to the effort? Well, you know, during uh, my when I gather the evidence and I seize Drake's phone and I find some text from four years ago where he's talking about put some hot sauce in the condom and that bitch will blow smoke out of her ears. Once I find that, that's all I need. Well, there was a another case I had many years ago where this poor man had put Visine in some iced tea, I believe it was, because he had thought he had gotten this woman pregnant and he was going to induce a miscarriage by putting Visine or something like that mm -hmm. in a drink of hers and awful case. Um, it didn't work. He ended up um, uh, beating her to death, I believe, with a baseball bat. And then the ultimate irony was that the uh, she was indeed pregnant, but it wasn't by him. I would also argue if I'm representing the Instagram model, was there not a toilet in the room? You were carefully funneling the Tabasco into the condom. Could you have not just dropped it into the toilet and flushed the toilet? When I mean, these, these arguments are just, you know, you know this, the, it, it's amazing to me that a case that I thought was so ridiculous on its face that in the span of one 15 minute best uh, 15 minutes in the universe, you've assembled not only foreseeability, but you've debunked any defense by Drake. Well, let's just say you had some amount of cocaine and the cops were banging on the door and you were in the bathroom. Would you throw Tabasco on the cocaine or would you just flush it down the toilet? Now, we, ha we have to establish... Though, well, wait a second. How much time you got? Because there's a third option. Yeah, you do a little Never bump, did. and then you <laughs> send the rest of the bay. But we'd have to... See, I bet through discovery, I can establish that Drake knew the Tabasco didn't kill the, the, the semen. Now, we can find out whether it does or doesn't. Gary can I've look been into looking. That. I've been looking. It's just basically all links back to this story. Ah, 
But as long as Drake thought it did, it doesn't matter if it does or not, right, Mark? As long as Drake <laughs> thinks it does, he's still in the clear. But like I said, one text, one email where he's fucking around, and an we internet, got him. An internet search mm-hmm. in the, the search history, right? Yes, that's right. That, you know, that would what help. is it about these foil packets and semen? Because I, I think I remember a case also many years ago where a life top prisoner, meaning somebody who had a life sentence, wanted to procreate. And so he would smuggle his sperm out in little mayonnaise um, packets mm. and, um, and was, I think, very upset when his sperm was intercepted by the authorities and they were not able to then uh, preserve it. You know, it's amazing that you have people like this who are so fertile that they can use condoms shoved up um, and other things like that. And then there's others who have to spend tens of thousands of dollars in order to, uh, in order to have a baby. It's a, there's an incredible range of, um, of human procreation, but this case also made me think of, there was a, I believe he was a doctor who was prosecuted and I believe it was for a sex offense many years ago. And I think it was in the criminal courts building. And I think the prosecutor is now a judge and um, the, the defense was that the doctor um, used to ejaculate into a cup uh, because he either for medical or for procreational purposes and that the accuser had stolen the cup because she knew where it was in the doctor's office and used that uh, in order to implant it. So when a rape kit was done, that she would show positive signs that there was uh, a connection by via the DNA. And uh, as I remember, I think the doctor was acquitted. The, the jury found that to be a credible set of facts, or wow. at least one that raised a reasonable doubt. I'm seeing an article here from 2009 suggesting that this idea was first floated by Tom Likas. Tom Likas, the radio personality. Correct. Really? That is what this article from 2009 says. Now, to be fair, it wow. references this being said by a radio host and then says it was probably Tom Likas. So if that's not definitive, but world's colliding. I wonder if wow. Drake is a big Likas fan. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem like his demo. Well, what is she asking for? Do I don't know? know that they're filed yet. This was just, it's just, this is. Just coming across our uh, research by Brett uh, recently, today, in the last couple hours. So we'll definitely have to do a follow-up when we got more time, don't you think? Absolutely. So what do you think, uh, what's going on with the Vax mandate in the Supreme Court? Well, interestingly, there's been, um, and we'll, I guess, finish with this. There was a lot of hullabaloo about the oral statements and questions by the Supreme Court justices. And specifically on day one in real time, it was by Justice Gorsuch and Justice Sotomayor. Um, interestingly, what's happened since you and I talked about the mandate arguments on Friday that were happening when we recorded, uh, Sotomayor's uh, question has been, at least if you believe the Washington Post, been completely debunked that the as factually inaccurate. And Gorsuch's, they've they've actually gone back and listened to the tape, and it turns out that the transcription was wrong, and he was correct because he was talking about the number of cases of flu and had said basically tens of thousands or something like that. And the way it was interpreted in the transcription made it seem he, as if he, he said he said hundreds, thousands, but it sounded like he said hundreds of thousands. I think that Correct. was the break. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Very good. Sotomayor <laughs> sounded like one of my mom's dumb fucking friends from high school. Like there's people, there's kids, there's a uh, hundred thousand kids on, on ventilators. That's no good. You, we, we don't want more of that. Like she was, she first off took a number, which was 3,400 and turned it into 100,000. I don't know if we want these people dictating policy for the land. Then she sounded a little hysterical. Then she fucked up every fact and figure and was talking about ventilators and kids. Is Do they, they all have a bunch of junior squires that are in charge of 
keeping them up to date with facts and numbers and statistics, oh, yeah. right? She Supreme sounded like Court, a hysteric. The Supreme Court clerks are some of the most credentialed people in the world. I mean, there's statistics about how many of them are, are, um, are Ivy League and the top of their class. And it's quite a plum assignment when you get it, because then after you've done your stint at the U.S. Supreme Court, you can basically write your ticket for any of the major firms or any uh, governmental agency that you want to go to work for. You're in great demand. So, yes, to a long-winded way to answer your question, yes, they all have the 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 pick of anybody they could want from the best and the brightest. The thing that I found disturbing is they're talking about the constitutionality of something, and she's speaking like a mom whose child was in the hospital. We're just here to figure out whether this is will pass constitutional muster, not that you're fucking freaked out and inflating numbers and sounding like a fucking hysteric. Why are you on the Supreme Court? What are we asking? We're not asking if COVID is a good thing or a bad thing. We're asking about the constitutionality of passing a vax mandate. I, I, why is she talking about how she feels or is she scared or well, inflating there's, numbers? There, there's part of, and I ran into this on one of our COVID cases today. The um, One of the things that you run into here. Uh, is that the U.S. Supreme Court, except in the context of the religious exemption um, uh, cases where they decided that California had gone too far, generally what happens is that judges fall back on this old 100-plus-year-old case called Jacobson. You and I have talked about it before. And Jacobson gave the idea that a rational basis, and the rational basis has devolved, as a constitutional uh, inquiry to basically anything goes. You just do a, you conjure up something like, I, in fact, today, the one I read was that um, they conjured up outdoor dining was that's brings people into contact where they don't necessarily have to be in contact. And therefore for an extended period of time, they're not wearing masks. And that's a, that's a, hazard and therefore the government's got a rational basis to do what they're going to do. So under that kind of a theory, and one of the reasons I've been arguing for almost going on, I, I know we talk about this all the time, 20 months, but that you've got to do something with a little bit more scrutiny is because if you push back even a little, that kind of parade of horribles comes, uh, comes uh, winds out and makes no sense. And, and by the way, we're, our science, uh, believe it or not, has uh, come a, a lot farther than the days of Jacobson and nobody in Jacobson back in whatever it was, 1910, um, uh, or is thereabouts was envisioning what you were going to have a perpetual state of emergency. So I'll yeah, leave my, it at that. yeah, that's my, the problem. You invite you invite when you have a such a low bar to to justify the COVID Constitution, which is what the what we have evolved to. When you have that, that low bar, anything goes. I mean, you know, there really is no. You don't have to be tethered to to any facts or data or, or yeah. be subject to cross-examination. Well, here's what we can't have. We can't have policymakers feeling scared and hysteric about things and then either ignoring science or twisting numbers and statistics to justify their hysteria. Like Sotomayor, you're scared. Fine. So is my mom. But you're not allowed to take 3,400 and turn it into 100,000 to justify your rational fears. All right, Mark. Always good seeing you, my friend. I miss you, Gary. Thank you so much for everything you did today. We'll see you in person soon. You can go to AdamCarolla.com for all the live shows. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Mark Garagos. Say it. Mahalo. Thanks for listening to Beyond a Reasonable Doubt. Stay tuned for more bonus episodes coming soon.